It is in that Queen Charlotte who is having trouble getting her children married off, which could present a real problem to the British line of succession. Her only legitimate grandchild has just died, leaving her husband, King George III, and her eldest son, King George IV, without an heir. Meanwhile, Flashback explores the early years of young Charlotte's marriage to George, who she met on the day she married him. This is another Bridgerton story, so the romance is a major part of the appeal, but the new new show also delves into the beginning of the Charlotte's friendship with a young Agatha Danbury, and this character was played by Arthur Matt Thomas, who is stuck in a loveless marriage to a much older man. Now, let's talk about the movie spoiler of the series of the movie Queen Charlotte, strictly streaming on Netflix. <laughs> Agatha becomes someone which Charlotte can go to for a voice of reason and honesty and someone who she can seek refuge in. And this character of Queen Charlotte was played by India Amadefo. Agatha will be honest with Charlotte and I think it's really rare for the queen to have someone who will just say no, that is not right because she's surrounded by yes people. As the story progresses, she gets closer and closer to Agatha. That friendship however comes with a ton of drama attached. What then happens to Queen Charlotte? As the series commences, Speaking about episode one of Queen Charlotte, young Charlotte is gearing up to marry King George, a man she never met, thanks in part of the efforts of her brother Adolphus. After a meeting with George's mother goes Ari, Charlotte decides the palace isn't the place to her and she tries to escape only to be stopped by George himself, having never met him. Charlotte doesn't immediately know that the charming man that she just confessed all her fears to is actually her future husband. Their conversation proves that he is not a true though She decides to go through with the wedding. Tim seems to be going smoothly until the wedding night when George informs Charlotte that she will live at Buckingham House while he stays at Kew. This particular arrangement doesn't sit right with Queen Charlotte, but there is not more she can just do about it. The couple finally consummate their marriage and agree to meet only on even days only in an attempt for them to conceive a child. But this all be regatory dalliances soon turn passionate and they confess their love for each other. As it turns out, George was holding back because he was afraid of Charlotte discovering the truth about his mental illness. But she ultimately becomes his fiercest protector when he gets caught between his overbearing mother and a nefarious doctor whose treatments are extremely unsound. By the end of the series, they have one child and another on the way. In the present, they hold on. For me, to confuse your confusion we know there is two queen charlotte they have the older queen charlotte and they also have the younger queen charlotte now let's just fast forward to the older queen charlotte queen charlotte is struggling with the fact that only one of her children has produced a legitimate head to the throne of the england and that her princess charlotte has just died her matchmaking skill may be the talk of the town but there are no use among her own sons who don't take kindly to her attempts to set them up with a random noble women well after many uncomfortable family meetings her son prince edward announced is that he and his wife are expecting a daughter named Victoria and as for her relationship with King George that's a little more complicated throughout the show. Charlotte asks her staff whether George has died leading them and viewers to think that she is eagerly awaiting for King George's demise in the final. However, we see that that's not true. Charlotte is still deeply in love with her husband, King George, in spite of his health problems, and she proves to be the only person who is capable of reminding him of who he once was. And I guess for sure that people will certainly ask, what then is wrong with King George? And as base of the real King George III, the Queen Charlotte character suffers from an unidentified mental illness that makes it possible for him to rule. The illness isn't named in this particular movie, but that's actually true to the period as doctors at that time weren't sure what was exactly wrong with him. Throughout this season, talking about the episode 1 to episode 6, we see George subjected to the stubborn and inhuman treatment, which to some extent reflect to what happened to the monarch in real life, as doctors tried forcibly restraining George until he had calmed himself. The serious Dr. Moron, played by Rob Maloney, is losing based on Thomas Moron, who attended to King in 1811. Hopefully, I believe that you have been entertained with the movie spoiler as I continue to narrate. Oh, well, as we see, judge symptoms include period of manias where he repeats himself and speaks for hours without stopping. Historians now think that he may have had bipolar disorder or 
porphyria, a liver disorder that can affect the nervous system. Then let's speak about what actually happened to Lady Danbury. Agatha actually isn't a lady yet when we met her in Queen Charlotte, but she does have a husband who is much older than her. When the palace realized that Charlotte isn't as white as they thought she was, they decided to undertake the great experiment and invite more families of color to the royal wedding. Agatha and her husband score an invitation and become Lord and Lady Danbury in their process. Still on the character of Agatha, known as Lady Danbury, and was carried out perfectly by Asema Thomas. Initially, Agatha agrees to spy on Charlotte for George's mother, Princess Augusta, but she reverses her decision when she realizes that Charlotte is young, alone, and lacking a true confidant. The pair become fast friends, and Agatha eventually starts giving her advice on love, sex, and also on in-laws. After Lord Danbury starts talking about the death of Lady Danbury's husband, yes, he actually died towards the end of episode 3. Agatha begins a brief affair with Violent Bridgerton's father, Lord Ledger, and the romance doesn't last because he already married. She then considers marrying Charlotte's brother, Princess Adolphus, but decided not to because she enjoys relative freedom that she feels as a widow, knowing that she's on her way to protect her family's future. However, she decided to renew her arrangement with Augusta and secure her son's inheritance and status as a lord. Just the sweet from my mouth, I'll be no sweet. I know for sure that it is certainly sweet. Okay, let's continue to the present day. Older Violin discovered Agatha's affair with her father so when she finds one of his signatures birthday crown sitting on Agatha's mantelpiece. She at first was upset what she perceived as a betrayal but she eventually accepts her friend's past indiscretion. Now let's emphasize on what exactly happens to Violent Bridgerton in the flashback since Violent Bridgerton has told a child happily escorted in the home of her father, Lord Ledger and mother. Like her future daughter, she also begs to attend balls despite not being out in the society. As an adult, Violet comes to the realization that she begins craving intimacy again after the death of her husband years earlier. Lady Danbury encourages her to go out there and meet a marquis, but Violet, afraid of betraying Edmund's memory, Agatha assures her that it's okay to want more for herself now that he is gone, but the series ends before she follows true on her new desires. I sabi just not be small, just leave just for me speaking about young Bremsley and the character was interpreted perfectly by Sam Clement. He also gets a love story of his own. He is in a relationship with his fellow servant Reynolds. Freddie Dennis was the person that interpreted the character perfectly. He also works for King George. When the duo are not at odds over what their respective bosses want, they manage to sneak off for a fair amount of their rated fauna. Once Charlotte and George work out their own relationship, Bremsley and Reynolds seems excited for a future where they can keep seeing each other while working so closely. In the present, however, Reynolds is nowhere to be seen. At one point, another servant catches Bremsley dancing alone on the palace grounds. Charlotte, meanwhile, seems unaware that Bremsley ever had a true love in his life at all. Does anyone actually die in this movie series called Queen Charlotte? When the series begins, of course, Charlotte's son George is mourning the death of his daughter, Princess Charlotte, but her demise happens off cameras. Other than that, the only person who dies is Lady Danbury's husband, Lord Danbury, and the character was interpreted by Cyril Henry, who expires during a vigorous for the love making section he actually had with Asena Thomas that played the character of Lady Danbury. Was there any under the duvet characters in this movie series called Queen Charlotte? Yes, of course, and there is. And which character actually have thus even this? Talking about under the duvet shenanigans in the series of Queen Charlotte. After Queen Charlotte and George overcome their initial miscommunication about who they want their marriage to be, they have XAX and a lot of it, like of course, the way it actually happened when people of their light and unbeknownst to them, their servant Reynolds and Bremsley are also having a lot of it, which increases the frequencies during the period when George and Charlotte we are having their own. Lady Danbury, on the other hand, is the only main character in Queen Charlotte who gets laid when we met her. She is joylessly being under the duvet with her husband, Lord Danbury, but once he dies, she's free to pursue more enjoyable pleasures. After his passing, we see her have one day of intimacy with Lord Ledger, but he cut their affair short for the sake of his family. While the series ends with Lady Danbury trying to secure her son's inheritance on behalf of all the families with new titles, Bridgerton proven that the great experiment was mostly a success. Movie spoiler per se, but I am certainly not a movie spoiler. Rather, my primary assignment is just to give you guys the insight of what this particular movie, Queen Charlotte, is all about. Or should I use the word epilogue? 
prolong or maybe synopsis but yes you have to understand exactly what you're about to watch and this is not the kind of movie that you will multitask tax while you are watching no you just have to dedicate all your time because episode by episode scene by scene everyone what's the time so you don't need any distraction whatsoever for you to watch this particular movie yes i have given you every narration aspect the way you can easily comprehend it it's just like when you have read read a particular novel now it's just for you to just watch the novel that you have just read oh yeah just appreciate my little effort by simply clicking on the red icon down below to subscribe to my channel and also the endeavor to turn on the notification bell that is right beside the subscribe button for you not to miss out once i upload any fresh interesting intriguing things that has to do with this particular movie queen challenge and also every entertaining things that has to do with your favorite celebrity and also your favorite husband of people than Jan Zanzi, Titan, irrespective of the season and just like I would always say until it commences. Big Brother Ninja Season 7 Level Up Reunion is there. Are you ready? Of course, I am ready to give you guys back to back. I see the hot and I can't wait to entertain you guys. Come Monday, the 19th of June, upwards and go enjoy the movie. Queen Charlotte, strictly streaming on Netflix.